Late Night Health continues with our regular contributor, uh, Robert Clancy, author of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Soul. Robert joins us from uh, New York, upstate New York, and we're going to talk today about staying healthy, inspirational-wise. Robert? Yeah, uh, I, have a, I have a great thought for that, and, and one, I know it's flu season, so I feel that you know connecting on your health and wellness is also uh, part of your heart healthiness, and heart, I mean, if you want to get a true health checkup, instead of checking your heart rate, try rating your heart. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, there are documented health benefits, having a good attitude, and helping others, even in a simple way, can change your outlook and improve your health and recovery. So I feel if you stay happy, you're going to stay healthy. Wow, that's really good. You And you, you haven't been sick in years, you told me. Correct. The last time I, I recall, I, I did get a doozy. Though. I, I got vertigo. <laughs> oh. It was many years ago. This is going back about six to eight years. I haven't really had any uh, flu or colds. I get a little bit of allergies, but I, I take care of myself and, and good exercise and, and staying a uh, positive attitude. Robert, thank you very much. You can find out more about Robert, of course, by going to uh, LateNightHealth.com. Look under uh, the tab for Robert. And, of course, you can now hear him on iTunes. Just go to iTunes and look for Late Night Health. Robert, we'll talk next week. Late Night Health continues with Dr. Joel Sanders, a holistic dentist in Highland Park, Illinois, just outside of Chicago, Dr. Sanders, welcome to Late Night Health. What's the difference between a traditional dentist and what you do? You call yourself a holistic dentist. A dentist or a biological dentist or an energetic dentist. Um, but basically, my understanding is that the difference is that uh, the holistic dentist realizes that the mouth is a part of the whole body. And it's approached so that the products and the services uh, we provide uh, affect the body in a healthy way, in a compatible way, that we're not using materials that are toxic or in some way would be detrimental to different individuals or even uh, individuals that have different uh, conditions. That would that would be like you don't use the silver amalgams, uh, the mercury amalgams that uh, have been used for 100 years uh, in dentistry, right? right? right. Because right. of the the, the toxic, toxicity that has been discovered in that in that metals, but dentistry is to me has become much more than just dentistry. Dentistry is really one of the first systems to predict and to diagnose other diseases. Uh, you, as a dentist, may see uh, issues of diabetes, uh, AIDS, and other other serious problems while you're working in a patient's mouth. Yeah, that's absolutely true. But, you know, actually, mainstream dentistry sees those conditions as well. I would say that the, the way that people find us is uh, people that um, have certain conditions. Uh, three especially, that uh, have been uh, connected to uh, metal fillings in the mouth. And those would be chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, and Lyme disease. And there seems to be a very strong connection between the metals in the mouth and how they affect the adrenal glands that are over the kidneys. And uh, there's something called adrenal fatigue. And... Um, while it's still in, uh, in process in terms of research right now, a lot of uh, practitioners feel that the heavy metals, especially nickel and uh, mercury, uh, affect the functioning of the adrenal glands, which are a big part of the immune response. So that's why people are so anxious to actually have their metal fillings removed, as well as, of course, not having them uh, placed into the with. Of course, and the the metals, the the adrenal fatigue that you're talking about is because yeah. the adrenal glands are are overused. They're and the body just gets used to the secretion of of adrenaline. Well, not exactly, but what, what it is is that I think 
the approach, and again, I'm a dentist, not a physician. Right. But I work with a network of holistic practitioners, physicians, acupuncturists, chiropractors, etc. But the idea is in holistic healthcare that um, they say it's like peeling the layers of an onion, that um, there's a, many layers of toxicity in the body, but the one that the patient is most aware of, the one that is producing the physical symptom or the illness is actually just the one that's speaking the loudest. And once you eliminate a specific cause of that physical symptom, then you get down to the next layer and you kind of keep going. It's not uncommon for somebody to come into the office as a new patient and they'll say, hey, you know, I just went to another dentist. He put in an amalgam, a mercury filling, and all of a sudden I'm having um, fatigue, I'm having migraines, etc." But what it is, is it's not that the amalgam itself really caused it. it. It did, but probably that one amalgam, that one mercury filling, which is about 50% mercury, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. And that's when patients become aware of toxicity and, and symptoms that actually have been ongoing for many years. And there, are not many, and there are not many doctors yet, dentists, who are doing this. I mean... I, I, I would say less than one percent. One percent of all dentists yeah, are doing in, in this. the Midwest. And I'd say less than one percent. Yeah. And when you do this, you you have to follow EPA regulations because the 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 nickel and the mercury are are biotoxic materials. Correct. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I don't know if it's that is, but there is there are regulations here, uh, definitely for the disposal of the heavy metals. But, um, you know, it's interesting. I was at a seminar recently with a man named Gordon Christensen, who's probably one of the foremost researchers in dentistry in the U.S. today. And he said that uh, the U.S. is the only developed nation that allows nickel in its dental alloy because nickel is a known carcinogen. And in Europe, it's actually illegal to use it. It's a felony. Wow. So you don't find it in any of the dental materials there. So we could be arrested by going to <laughs> Europe yeah. and having having um, uh, silver in our mouth, metal in yeah, our mouth. Yeah, possibly. Never right? thought of that. Yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> you know, I I've had cavities. I don't have that many, uh, and and the 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 number of cavities. My understanding is we don't get as many as we used to. Is that correct? You mean adults or just, just uh, Americans? In general? Just Americans in general. I think you know. Um, uh, I think that the the quality of dental care has gone up so significantly in developed nations that that's probably true. And I'm seeing uh, children in my practice now. I've been practicing over thirty years that um, come in and they actually are decay free. And when I first started practicing back in the nineteen uh, eighties. That wasn't the case. And, uh, but, you know, it's interesting because mainstream dentistry feels that a big part of that is the fluoride that's uh, been used in the, you know, in the public water supplies and in toothpaste and even fluoride tablets that are prescribed by physicians. But there's a good deal of information out there. Uh, you can even Google it, fluoride toxicity, about the fact that fluoride is a neurotoxin. And it's a, uh, they feel it's a significant factor in hypothyroidism. It, wow. Uh, it actually helps uh, take iodine out of the thyroid gland so that it cannot function effectively. And which, of course, the body needs, the thyroid needs to function. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so when somebody comes in, a young child under, the, I think, the age of, what, 16 or 18, comes in for a tooth cleaning, teeth cleaning, Yeah. Uh, you don't do a, a fluoride treatment on them. We, we do, in my office, we do not. Uh, I, I think that uh, in mainstream offices, uh, you'll, you'll still see them using the old-fashioned trays and, and uh, fluoride application that's applied for two to five minutes to saturate the teeth. That, and, the, and the fluoride does have some efficacy. It's just the, the, the reaction, the potential harm that it can do right. to the body. The toxicity is much more significant you know, than, than any benefit. I think the other thing is with fluoride, it's, uh, again, uh, they feel that it's involved in adrenal fatigue. And, and that it, it does what's called put burden onto the immune system. How did you decide to go into dentistry in the first place? 
dentistry or holistic dentistry? Dentistry first. Uh, dentistry, you know, my cousin, who's a year older than, than I am, was uh, in Washington University uh, Dental School, and he just I, I became interested in what he was doing. And uh, basically he said, hey, what the heck, you know? <laughs> I had no idea I had this whole career ahead of me. And you went to Northwestern, uh, which is... I went to Northwestern here in Chicago, and about five years after I was out of school, I met a man named Doug Cook. And Doug is a, uh, he's in his mid-80s. He's up in uh, Surrey, Wisconsin, which is about an hour, 15 minutes north of Green Bay, up near the uh, UP. And uh, he's, he's been involved in uh, a holistic approach to dentistry for over 50 years. And he's really been my mentor, and I've been fortunate enough to spend a lot of time with him. And so that all of, everything I know, I, I have to really credit him with the information. It's all his original research. And would you say so, that, that the, 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 even though, though Northwestern is one of the best dental schools in the country? Well, you know, at the time, Northwestern's been closed probably about 15 years. Has it really? Northwestern has, Loyola in, in uh, Chicago. Uh, there was a time, I don't know if you remember, where um, uh, AIDS, HIV became prominent. Right. In the public eye, and uh, it was first uh, noticed that a uh, dental office in Florida had been involved in had a number of patients that they felt may have been infected through uh, uh, poor infection control at the office. That was later found not to be true. But at that time, the scare actually uh, caused many schools to close as a result of low enrollment. Well, uh, the Northwestern was one of the top schools. It, it the, was. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. It was. It was. Yeah. Uh, our guest is Dr. Uh, Joel Sanders. Uh, in a few moments when we take our break, uh, we'll talk to uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Sanders about his uh, medical, I don't know what else to call them, but service missions to Ecuador. He's been there three times. Oh, and yeah. why he does that uh, to treat the children in, in uh, need in that country with uh, dental care. People come to you from all over the country, they all, all over the world. Actually, I heard the other day. Well, it you know it's it's uh, all the results. I, I give all the credit to Dr. Cook because the uh, he's the one who has uh, really developed this whole technique and this, this special protocol in dentistry. And they're they're referred to him because of our close association. There there's a very specific way when people do request metal removal, there's a very specific way that it be done because you can actually make it worse to remove it incorrectly, you know. Uh, uh, that's a, oh, I didn't know that. if you just left the material in. Our guest is Dr. Joel Sanders, and uh, we are talking to him about holistic dentistry. He's a dentist who goes beyond just restoring teeth. He actually helps restore health to the body, everything, from the brain to the toes. And we're going to continue our conversation in just a few moments. By the way, you can now download us and listen to us on iTunes.com, and we appreciate you liking us on Facebook. So go to Facebook.com slash Late Night Health. Dr. Joel and I and the insane Daryl Wayne and Sharla will all return in just a couple of moments here on Late Night Health. <laughs> 